George Church is the Robert Winthrop Professor of Genetics at Harvard Medical School, a Professor of Health Sciences and Technology at Harvard and MIT. Professor Church helped initiate the Human Genome Project in 1984 and the Personal Genome Project in 2005. He is widely recognized for his innovative contributions to genomic science and his many pioneering contributions to chemistry and biomedicines. He has co-authored 580 papers, 143 patent publications, and the book Regenesis. With that, let me start the interview. Um, so, Professor Church, we're honored to have you on our channel, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my pleasure. So, Professor Church, you're a professor at the Harvard Medical School with a very wide range of interests. But today, I would like to focus on aging and age reversal. Can you tell us... Um, can you share with us what led you to become like a scientist in the first originally? Uh, so it was uh, two main th uh, themes, maybe or maybe three. One is the natural environment. I was surrounded by a beautiful Floridian uh, mm. environment uh, where we would grow food that we could eat in our backyard and right on the bay, uh, mm. literally in our backyard. And so that was the natural uh, then there was the extremely unnatural, which was uh, computers and robots. I had admired them from a distance. I got to see them up close uh, in 1964 in New York uh, City. And then the third was the, the semi-natural, which was my third father was a physician, and he kind of carried around his, his whole office in a, in a black, big black bag um, for mm. house calls and whatnot. And so I would see it every night. I would mm. kind of open it up and look through all the, he would have like syringes that he would sterilize himself and, and there'd be all sorts of pharmaceutical, injectable pharmaceuticals and, and he would allow me to inject them. So that, those three strains, threads, mm. I always wanted to bring together. And so I eventually did. Right. And so maybe those interests is why it, your kind of remit is so wide at the moment. It, it, it's right. amazing the areas that you cover. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is kind of take a step back on the aging. So what is your theory of aging? So why do you think we age? Is it programmed? Is it accumulation of damage or a bit of both? I, I lean pretty heavily on the programming side. Uh, mm. I, you know, I'm op I try to be open-minded and, and obviously there is damage that occurs, you know, if mm. you, um, you know, clip off your hand unlike a certain amphibian, it doesn't grow back. Mm. Uh, so, uh, but, it, but it, it's programmed in the sense that mice live for two years and bowhead whales live for 200. And that's not so much due to their training and their environment. Uh, mm. So, uh, and it's also programmed in the sense that we know how to s s move that program around uh, for cells and tissues. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, because we see that the epigenetic kind of program seems to continue past reproduction, right? And, and so that would... That's, that's right. So it's, it's, it's developmental biology from the fertilization of the egg onward, and then past reproduction is called aging, but it's still a kind of development where uh, it's, it's, less crit it's still critical to the evolution of the species, even though you're post-reproductive. Some people think, oh you know, you're no longer relevant to evolution, but you are in the sense that both negatively and you're consuming resources and positively in that you're um, conferring cultural uh, know-how to the next generations. So that has to be balanced and each species has a different balance. For some species, um, uh, you don't need to kill them off uh, early because they're not really consuming that many resources or resources are abundant what have you, predators are few. Um, all of these things correlate with uh, the average lifespan of the, of the species. Right. So for a particular, I guess for an individual, so do you think that, you, that your age is mostly controlled by your genes or kind of the epigenetics, environment and lifestyle? Kind of where do you think that split comes yeah, I, I think it's, it's mostly defined by your genes. You can really screw it up, of course. You know, you can, you can smoke, you can, uh, you know, uh, have all kinds of uh, poor practices with respect to infectious diseases, uh, sunlight, so forth. But 
roughly speaking, uh, if you basically behave yourself uh, as a normal human being, uh, you're, you, it's, it's, it's due to the genes, and, and mainly the species-specific genes, not so much the individual-specific genes, although there are some uh, that impact uh, your longevity. Uh, mm -hmm. For the most part, we're all members of the same species, and we have a fairly narrow uh, window um, where we die. Um, again, as long as we don't screw things up with childhood mm -hmm. diseases and things like that. Right. But there do seem to be some genes that allow people to live to like 120 and, and others. I, I, so that I'm not convinced that it's environment oh, right. or genes. Uh, it's, 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 it could have to do with just uh, luck. Um, stochastics uh, that you that you just didn't happen to get or it's you could call it environmental but not something that's easy to control you know you just didn't happen to get a certain autoimmune reaction or you didn't happen to get a certain cosmic radiation that that mm. caused a cancer that sort of thing um, and it's not yeah right but 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 pr probably there is something to be learned by looking at the differences between um, long-lived animals and short-lived animals and long-lived humans and short-lived humans. Although I would say that precious little has come out of that and we've been heavily involved in both of those uh, studies and we will continue to do it. Um, but I think the mechanistic and synthetic biology approaches have yielded a whole lot more than the com comparing a short and long-lived. I, I kind of see that. And and I'm kind of following what, what's happening on those one, as those as well, like the Neil Barzilai, Neil Barzilai and his uh, centenarians. So I saw in an interview, I think it was an interview with Life Extension. So you mentioned that humans aging will be eradicated by 2030. I think was it. Do you do you still have that date in mind, or did they misquote you? It doesn't strike me as a sort of thing that I would say as right. such uh, as a bald fact like that. Right. Uh, it, it, it would have had to have been couched in a very specific mm -hmm. manner. I, I think that we will have a, some sort of aging reversal that works in humans by then. Right. Uh, but uh, because we already have aging reversal that works in animals, uh, yep. that, that, uh, and longevity that works in uh, animal interventions. So. But... Um, mm. I don't think that aging reversal necessarily results in uh, longevity or or in end of aging or immortality, any of those things. Uh, it probably it probably leads in that direction, and mm. it could change the slope of our improvement in in longevity. So we've been improving about one year every four years. We've added one year of life to every four every four years of of research or. Hmm. Public health, um, and you could change that cha slope could change to, to you know, one every two years or one every one year, which would be really, which is what we're looking for, which is escape velocity. Right. I was yeah, I was going to ask about slopes that. Slopes do change, even yeah. even slopes that are really really straight with very small error bars for 170 years, which is what this is, hmm. um, could change. In the same sense that Moore's law. Uh, is not a law. It, it, we have changed the slope of that, at least in, in the biological equivalent of Moore's law. It's slope changed quite radically. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're, we're looking forward to escape velocity. But I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.